Some people might think that this is a magic wand, but really it's just a paintbrush. I wanted to talk about ways that you can make your paintings really pop, really interesting. If you think your paintings are just looking a little flat, um, there's always visual boredom that can come into our work and our eye and our mind. But these are a few uh, really true and tried little techniques. Of course, we need good perspective. We need good drawing, uh, interesting shapes. Uh, we also need to make sure that we've got a, uh, a really good contrast because that's going to bring the light. It's also going to be able to, for us to control the viewer's eye where we want them to look. We don't want them swimming all around the painting, waiting and looking for a place for their eye to land. So then we've got to then think about uh, use of colour. And with that, we can actually have a, a colour theme, colour scheme, how we're using light and colour as a entity in itself. But then we also have our tonal values as well. We need to be able to create that illusion of distance. And I think that's one of the great things that most people do think about uh, is not getting that lovely distance. Uh, that's what I tend to put a great deal of effort in, uh, working out ways to grey off my colours, grey off the, the, the saturation of pigment, so then that will give me the, uh, the illusion of depth. And then also, uh, we can then come in and have a close look and then just see how I've staggered shapes. I don't have everything all sort of straight lined. I've got enough straight line to really grab the viewer's attention. Uh, if we take into account this lovely little bit of light here, the other thing that most people will do is then put four, five, six other areas of interest where we need to make sure we nail that little area. And I think that's where uh, a lot of paintings come unstuck. The brain says, oh, the painting needs more and needs more. But ultimately, we just need those primary, secondary and focal point, uh, tertiary focal point areas. Once we get those in place, especially that really, really strong primary focal point, the, that one area, and I would say with this one, it's kind of down here with a secondary and then that tertiary area. So I'm using the viewer's eye to run around the scene to get them to engage. The amount of times that I've uh, walked into a gallery or seen a painting and thought, oh geez, that only needs a little bit more contrast or it just needs a little bit more brushwork, a little bit more confidence in the brushwork. There's so many little things that go to it. Um, that's why I love doing uh, little studies, uh, whether it's outside, uh, the still life little studies, those ones that we do put a direct time limit on. They're teaching us to edit and how to uh, simplify and people get that mixed up with thinking simplification is, oh, I'm gonna make it easier, gonna make it uh, much easier to do. But in truth, I believe it's 10 times harder because we're using 50 words instead of 500 words to describe what we're talking about. So hopefully this has given you some ideas and some tips on ways to make your painting uh, interesting. But also remember, we're building the board up from our board preparation, that's our first layer. Then we come in with a block in, that's putting some paint down. So it is a field of depth thing as well, not just that one go, straight board, putting on paint. It's a process that, um, I think we have to love each pro part of the process. Um, also put a lot of effort into your subject matter as well. And here's a few other examples. This one's from Southern Utah, beautiful little valley called Pine Valley. The buildings are interesting. I really love the amount of blue that it is in the background and in the mid distance. I felt that was gonna drive the atmosphere, drive the light. But the thing that really made it and gave it that wow factor was the cows. They were all introduced, but I think that's the type of things we need to do. We need to look at big ideas. Uh, we may have this one here as with the uh, scene of Ponte Verde in um, the Cinque Terre area on the west coast of Amer um, Italy. We have the chain. That is the lovely lead-in line, bouncing towards where the light is. It's a powerful backdrop, but I've tried to tone that down. Then we come to a, 
landscape in Australia, snow-capped mountains, we've already captured the audience. It's all about grabbing that audience. If we can have them for three seconds, we'll have them for a lifetime. The little shed wasn't there, so I thought the foreground needed a big shape. Has another nice leading line with the road coming through, bit of smoke, it's tying all those shapes together. And then uh, from my trip to um, Ireland uh, last year, I managed to find some really great castles and it's a horizontal format, but it's all about the drama of the sky, placing some nice little darks up against those light bits. A uh, little bit of a focal area, nice little dark there, and we're away. And also we did a trip to New Zealand, so we were managed and able to find some uh, beach scenes. And initially, I had actually overworked this one. I had way too much going on in that left-hand corner. So I actually painted it out. So see, sometimes we can overdo things. We can have the painting overworked, trying to do too much, trying to say too much. So that's where reworking is a huge part of uh, getting that visual aspect to our work. And I do love Italy, the colors, the light. I feel you can barely ever go wrong. Um, we can really use the brush marks to get the eye to move from our focal areas up through a vertical and then up into the sky. I haven't ever painted many horses, but we have a really interesting horse painting here. I'd actually had this subject for about five years. Oh, sorry, nine years now. And I painted it just late 2023. I'd had it in my storage bank, knowing and just waiting uh, for that right time to paint. And I think that's another important part. Um, if you're fortunate and you live in a really great area, you, can, you don't really have to work too hard at finding subject matter. But for me, I've painted for years, 37 years in my local area, and I do love those journeys, love going to new places, love trying to find something new for me. So sometimes it's just the colour, the, the, the freshness of a new idea is what can reinforce uh, what I'm trying to say as well. It's nothing like having something brand new. So it's all good fun. <laughs> <laughs>